Hi, I'm Jim Wright and welcome to my machine shop. Today I want to talk a little bit about a problem I've had with my new SC4 lathe and that is getting it on the bench. I came up with some solutions which are a little different than anything I've seen. Uh, my main issues are stability when moving it with an engine hoist, two, making sure I don't damage the lead screw when I use the engine hoist and the slings, and three, to make sure that it's secure and stable when I make the move. It's a one-man move with my wife assisting, and uh, I'll go in now and show you the setup. Here's the location where I plan to put the lathe. It's an old craftsman bench. I put a couple layers of plywood on top of the bench and covered that with a layer of chemical resistant plastic. The chip tray sits on top and I have it mounted in the position where I want it. I've already drilled the holes so that once I move the lathe, I'll be able to uh, run the bolts up to secure it to the rest of the bench. Here's the lathe ready to be moved. So the goal is to be able to raise it up, keep it stable, not damage the lead screw or any other part of the lathe, and move it securely over to the bench. Here's a picture of the cradle that's used to move the lathe. It's set up so that the width is enough to encompass both the lathe bed and also the lead screw and lead screw cover. Uh, the front protects the lead screw. The bottom plate is the length of the flat area on the bottom of the casting on the lathe bed. So this is all made out of two by six. Uh, dimensions actually fit the lathe very nicely and it's all lag bolted together so it's uh, really quite sturdy. Here you can see the balancer. Two ends of one of the slings is attached to one end via chains and two ends of the other sling is attached to the other end also via chains. There's a screw between them and you can essentially screw the connection point to the engine hoist back and forth, adjusting the center of gravity. Here you can see the front side of the lathe with the cradle uh, surrounding it. So this is the setup and uh, hopefully we'll see how it goes. I've raised the lathe up a little bit off the crate and we've got a pretty close match in terms of balance. I can trim that somewhat. In this case, I think I want to raise the back a little bit. So let me see if I can trim it here. I think that looks pretty good. Here you can see the lathe set right above the pedestals and we're about ready to lower it on top of the pedestals in order to get a final position. Once we had the lathe positioned, we were able to maneuver it so that we had the pads on the uh, lathe bed down right over the pads on the chip tray. Here you can see the actual positioning of the feet on top of the pads uh, on top of the lathe table. One thing that's worth thinking about is before you begin, it's wise to do a plan of the lathe, get all the dimensions, and then be able to use those in order to plan the siding. A good example is where I added uh, an extra long table and I'll have a power feed on my Sieg X3 mill. So that table will end up taking a lot of space, so more than adequate space is left. So in fact, the table can shift to the right and, uh, and stay well clear of the lathe itself.
power feed. Cross slide feed. So I hope this has been a useful exercise. I think it does show one way you can move the lathe. This one, uh, by using the cradle, is a way to move it with an engine hoist, one person, uh, with some assistance for simply making sure that the lathe uh, didn't rock, and also for positioning when dropping it down on its feet. Uh, it made it straightforward to do and with no muss or fuss. In general, uh, these are fairly heavy, 220 pounds, and uh, you don't want to damage it. So, there are alternative ways to do it as well. The straightforward one is to have three strong friends help you move it, and uh, you can do it that way as well. Take care.